In this video, I'm going to tell you how to get a max level in Breach Protocol. Subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel. We give you the secrets to crush Cyberpunk 2077. So Breach Protocol, I think, has gotten harder as the updates have gone through. And it's also been less important as the updates go through. But you still can get some perk points out of Breach Protocol depending on how much you put into your intelligence. So there's five categories of that you put attributes points into and breach protocols under intelligence. While quick hacking is very popular and, and often is confused with breach protocol, uh, quick hacking is is much easier to level. There's a, there's a, there is a XP glitch for that, but I'm not aware of one for breach protocol. The thing is that there are a lot of opportunities to do breach protocol if you look for them. So there's going to be a red spot just not just on the map, but also just when you're looking around that will show you breach protocol locations. Every time you go into a fight, you can do one breach protocol, and then there may also be breach protocol terminals that you can jack into, that V can jack into, if she has a, a high enough intelligence score. So I've come across breach protocol terminals that are, um, you know, level 15 or 16 or something like that uh, in Santo Domingo, but it's, you know, most of them seem to be below 10 in uh, Westbrook and Watson, where I've been farming XP by doing the gigs and NCPD, Scanner Hustle. So, you know, sometimes you'll find vending machines that you can jack into. Sometimes it'll just be little wall units that you can jack into. Sometimes it's going to be a computer that you jack into. You just tap, tap the button. You don't hold down the button. I think that's that button is square typically on the... P uh, PS5, PS4, and X on the Xbox. But you you don't want to, uh, you just don't hold down the button, you just want to tap it to to uh, ha go through it. And then you have this kind of mini game that you go through, and you know, uh, you upload demons if you're jacking into, and then the breach protocol is going to affect how much RAM you use, and, and depending on how much you get into the breach protocol tree, you could also uh, add more demons, which are kind of programs that make uh, V's hacking stronger. So, I, you know, so for instance, I think you can get the mass vulnerability demon uh, when you start a fight if you do a successful breach protocol uh, letter sequence at like level five of intelligence. So you don't have to spec too much in. You can get more demons as you spec more into intelligence. I don't recommend specking into intelligence. I think that, you know, there are probably better things you can spec into, like technical ability and reflexes and potentially even cool and body that, you know, putting a lot of attribute points of which you have a relatively limited number in, I don't think that's good, although I, on my first playthrough, I did do 20 intelligence, and I really like to do quick hacking, although Breach Protocol, I didn't really do until my second playthrough after 1.6. I think you can definitely get max level on, on Breach Protocol if you are disciplined about every time that you're doing a gig, NCP the scanner hustle interaction with foes, that you're doing that initial breach protocol for the ice pick, and you might, if you've specced into the tree more, then you can get other demons you can do at the start of a fight, and that'll make your quick hacking um, more powerful through the fight. And then looking for the terminals, then then you can get enough XP from this uh, that, that you'll be able to max it out. Certainly if you're if you're not going to level 20 in intelligence, you should be able to max this out. If you're doing more of a completionist playthrough and you're looking for those terminals. But you can't do breach protocol anymore on uh, just any vending machine. It's gotta be a, it, only specific ones. 
in a hostile location at specific times. So sometimes you can like do inanimate objects that are electronically hooked up and you can do a breach protocol on them to start a fight. Sometimes you can jack into them in hostile locations. But in general, no, you can't do it in a non-hostile location and do a breach protocol or jack. The other kind of problematic thing about breach protocol is it, it it gives you money which is good that's fine that's like a money maker although it's not the best money maker in the game but it gives you some it also gives you quick hacking components and this kind of puzzled me um you know what am i going to do with these quick hacking up components and the issue is that you have to spec relatively high into the intelligence tree to take advantage of the quick hacking components so that you can craft quick hacks, right? Whereas you can buy quick hacks from net runners who are vendors in the map and you can buy fairly high level ones fairly early and they're not that expensive. So specking into the intelligence so that you can craft quick hacks, which seems somewhat analogous to specking into technical ability to craft weapons and armor is is not really specking into crafting is very powerful it'll make you can you make you millions of eddies it can uh give you legendary weapons when you otherwise would not by getting to at least level 18 for edge runner artisan but getting to the levels necessary to craft you know legendary quick hacking components is is probably totally unnecessary and a total waste of your rare attribute points by specking into intelligence in my humble opinion but i really do i do like the net runner build i do like pl that play style quick hacking i like a lot better than breach protocol but, uh, you know, I find both of them fairly enjoyable play styles. I just don't think they're the most powerful play styles out there, especially Breach Protocol for what it does. And it kind of slows down the game a lot because it is a pause in the game, right? And so the good thing about Breach Protocol is that you can do those at the beginning of a fight. It's not going to end in the middle of a fight, and it's not going to affect V1 bit because all time is paused while that's going on. But is it an activity that you would like to do in the game? I'm not sure. It depends on the individual. Subscribe to the Linus Wilson channel. We give you the secrets to crush Cyberpunk 2077.